welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host. My guest this evening is Bob Bradley from Morgan Professionals and Primary Residential Mortgage. Bob, welcome. Thank you, Peter. How Good are you? See you. Good Good to nice, see you. Nice to see you. It's been, been a while since you and I it have has, it has. Last, last seen each other. It's nice to, nice to have you on again. So I was wondering, are you, are you, you're in the mortgage business. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you became in the mortgage business? Well, I spent about 17 years with divisions of uh, United Technologies, uh, Sikorsky Aircraft and Northern Systems, and I was in finance. And then just kind of a change of events. I always liked real estate and real estate investing, and um, I looked into doing, looked into the mortgage industry mm -hmm. and uh, started doing some research. It was closer to home because I was driving to Norwalk for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, so that it was a, a need for people. that. Okay. Uh, because you know, everybody always kind of seems to need money for whatever reason, whether you're buying a house or right. refinancing or financing college education or whatever. So I've been in the mortgage industry now for 18 years. Wow. And obviously you like it. I love it. All yeah, right. I do love it. Exactly. It's a long time in that business. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. And I guess you've spent some years with the division of United Technologies and then moved into the mortgage industry. How was the transition? Um, it was, you know, it was fine. It was interesting. Uh, right. You know, it was finance. It's still kind of the financial components. So okay. it was, uh, you know, pr uh, previously I did contract management or contract um, uh, financial control. So it was, you know, still finance. And now it's just more personal finance. It's really understanding the needs of um, the, the household requirements. So if I'm looking to, into getting a mortgage, what are some of the things I need to know? Well, you need to know what your credit score is. Okay. Very important. Mm -hmm. Credit scores, you know, some of the free credit reports, they don't give you the whole picture. We use different parameters in the mortgage industry. And the most of the um, credit bureaus that we use use a scoring system from 300, which is bad, okay. to 850, which is great. Okay. So that's one of the components. All right. Another component, obviously, you have to have some kind of an income to support doing a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You've got to pay it back. And you've got to have some kind of assets in order to either put a down payment down or if it's the equity in the house, that's also a component of the assets. Okay. So. Now, as far as you said, the, the, as far as assets for, to put the equity down, what types of assets do you, are the most common? Well, checking, savings, you know, you typically like to have, I mean, there's a lot of different programs, but okay. you, can, you know, typically the old days you would put down 20%. There are a lot of programs where you can put down a lot less than that. You can even put down, with some programs, you could put down 0%. So, Really? Yep. Now, what exactly is a mortgage? A mortgage is basically <laughs> a, a promise to repay a loan, and it's securitized by the property. So the property is actually the collateral that you're lending against. Okay. So if you have a house that's worth just say you know $200,000, for instance, mm -hmm. and you want to borrow a mortgage of $100,000, the promise is that you'll pay back that $100,000. That relationship of that, those two components, $100,000 to the $200,000, would give you a loan to value of 50%. Okay, sure. So, but it's basically a promise to repay a mortgage. Now, are or there, repay the, the debt. Okay. Now, as far as repaying the debt or repaying the mortgage, do you have to do it all in one fell swoop, or can you work no, no. it out in? Um, generally, Mortgages are, your typical mortgage is 30 years. Okay. Uh, there are some that went 40 years. All there right. are other terms. You, know, you can do a mortgage as short as five years, 10 years, 15 years, anywhere in between. Right. Uh, but people typically take a mortgage for 30 years. Okay. And then make payments. And you make your monthly payments. Um, you know, if you looked at a mortgage and said, well, what does a mortgage cost me? Well, Every thousand dollars that you borrow mm -hmm. costs approximately five dollars per. It's actually a little bit less, but five makes it a little easier. Okay. So if you were borrowing a hundred thousand dollars, your monthly principal and interest payment would be five hundred dollars. Okay. And over the life of the loan, you'd pay back that principal and interest for thirty years, or less if you prepay some of the principal. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to pay it back a lot sooner, and save a lot of interest. Now, as far as paying back the principal sooner, what exactly do you mean? Can you explain that to us? It's just that you accelerate your principal payments. Okay. So if you looked at a mortgage and you said, all right, well, if I paid it over 30 years, if I took $100,000 and paid it over 30 years, mm -hmm. 
you would pay approximately double in principal and interest. So gotcha. you'll pay about $100,000 back in principal mm -hmm. and roughly another $100,000 back in interest. If you accelerate that payment, yes. and if you make two extra payments per year, for instance, mm -hmm. you would knock about eight years off the term of the loan. Okay. So you would save X number of dollars worth of interest on that loan. Okay. So when you're talking to a financial plan, you're kind of looking at your situation, your cash flow scenario, that's one thing to consider. Okay. Now, I, now there are some basic parameters in getting a mortgage, and I always hear about credit scores and debt ratios, what are they? Well, the credit scores, again, yes. go from 300 to 850. Right. You really want to be in the 620 and above range to okay. get a mortgage. You okay. can get a mortgage with a 580 score. Okay. But the better your score, the better your situation is, the better chance of you getting a mortgage. The debt to income ratio is simply the measure of how much money comes into your household versus okay. how much goes out. Mm -hmm. The old Fannie Mae guideline used to be it was tw what was called 28 and 36, which referred to the front end ratio mm -hmm. and the back end ratio. The front end referring to the household expense for the mortgage, mm -hmm. the back end ratio referring to, <coughs> excuse me, the household and all other expenses, credit cards, automobile loans, student loans, etc. Those guidelines have been changed a bit, and you can really get a mortgage with a back end debt ratio of somewhere between 45% and 50%. Very nice. So, All yeah. right. Now, as far as, I guess there are different kinds of programs available. What is the conversational versus jumbo versus USDA versus FHA did I hear about it? Well, there's a lot of different programs. Go ahead. That's actually conventional okay. versus a jumbo. Thank you. So conventional loan is um, <laughs> typically considered either a 15 or 30 year program. All right. And it's for a loan amount of under $417,000, which is the jumbo limit. Okay. Anything over 417 in the conventional world is again a jumbo loan. Yes. There are FHA parameters that are a little bit different. Different counties have different limits and some counties have limits into the 700s for still what's kind of in that conventional world or first mortgage world. So, right. um, but you know, all sorts of different programs, conventional jumbo products, FHA is typically, was typically designed for, you know, first time home buyers, although many conventional programs have mirrored that uh, first time home buyer program. Okay. FHA originally came out in 1937. Their requirements are three and a half percent down. Okay. Their interest rates are excellent. They do have a mortgage insurance premium, so you have to take that into consideration when mm -hmm. you're figuring out what your payment is. VA loans, uh, typically or typically specifically for um, veterans, yep, can go to 100 percent financing. USDA loans can go to 100 uh, percent. They have some product eligibility requirements. Certain. Um, property eligibility requirements, and mm -hmm. income eligibility. Okay. Did I miss one? No. You're no? Good. no, you're good. <laughs> now, as far as you said the when we talked about the credit score rating, you said the lowest credit score is? 350. 350? I'm sorry, 300, Three, 850 high. 300, 850 high. What, what if somebody has a credit score is like 375, 400. Is that going to make it a little bit dif more difficult no, for them to get a mortgage? No, it's going to make it impossible. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. All right. I have, in my 18 years, I've never seen a 300-ish score. I think the worst I've ever seen is a low 400. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, you, you do have to work hard to get a 400 score, um, and meaning that you have not paid a lot of your debtors. Right. <laughs> so I've worked with people to get their, their scores into the 600s, Really? Because really it's dissecting what is wrong with the score. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something they haven't paid. Maybe collections or charge-offs or maybe even things that they don't know about. There's oftentimes I see medical collections that they, uh, they haven't been made aware, of, made aware of. So it's really just kind of understanding it. I take the time to work with the people to get them into a situation where they can buy a house. Okay. I don't like saying no. I don't like saying, no, we can't do this. I like to say, well, we've got some work to do on this, right. but, but we can fix it. Right. And now how long does it take for if somebody comes in, sees you, and then gets the process rolling, and if it's got to be fixed, 
to take a couple of weeks, a couple of months? Well, you know, it depends on the score. I mean, it depends on what's wrong. Uh, if there's five line items, it really shouldn't take that long. If there's 30 line items, then of course it's gonna take a bit longer. Right. You know, the typical process, if you have a good score, is much, much shorter. Okay. I mean, we can, I've closed loans in two weeks when I've needed to. Um, typically, you know, when you're writing up a contract for a purchase, mm -hmm. you've got a 45 day commitment typically, and right. or 30 to 45 day commitment and 45 to 60 day closing. Wow. So, but they can be do, done a lot quicker. They can. The nice thing about uh, the firm I'm with is mm -hmm. that we have on site underwriting and processing. So, it doesn't have to go to some, you know, off-site location right. where I lose track of it. I was I was going to say, I'm sh I'm sure it all the paperwork goes after it's done. It would go to an off-site location. Well, it eventually cases. goes to our corporate office okay. um, for the closing side of it, mm -hmm. but everything else is done in-house. Very nice. Um, even the final approval is done in-house. There have been situations where. I've had a closing that was taking place at two o'clock in the afternoon, closing, um, all the conditions were cleared at that morning. Mm -hmm. Wow. And those are short term closings. I mean, that's usually when I pick up something else that has, uh, you know, stalled, it out, stalled out somewhere else. Okay. You know, it could be that a, another bank was working on it and just couldn't do it. And they come to me and they go, oh, we still have a commitment of whatever date, We've got to get this done. So we will jump in and make sure it gets done. I was going to say they, they 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 do that as far as banks and they they basically do that where they say oh we can't do this. Sometimes they can. I mean, sometimes it's just outside of their parameters. Um, you know, with all good intentions in the beginning, they start off with the uh, you know the intention of approving it, and yeah. lots of things can happen. I mean, that's of one of the things we have to we anybody in my business educates the people it's like do not buy furniture do not buy a new car do not go late on a credit card all those little things can be a real problem if it you know if it's towards the end i was i was going to say why can why can buying like furniture be a problem when you're trying to get a mortgage because now it adds to your debt ratio gotcha now you've added let's just for instance say sure. you've added a $500 a month payment to your debt ratio mm -hmm. and let's say your debt ratio is teetering at 43% okay. that just tipped it over into whatever the 50% right. 55% range so now it's you know undoable all right Bob Bradley would you mind sticking around for another segment absolutely Peter. we'll be right back all right great so I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing the little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Hey. You ready to go? Yeah, but the uh, fire's not out. Close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I, I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why we're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, sitting here with mortgage expert Bob Bradley. Bob, welcome back. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. For, thanks for coming. Thanks for staying, sticking around for the segment. <laughs> Pleasure. Not a problem. So I guess we want to talk about what are people buying their first homes or need re refinancing their properties need to know? They need to know that a good credit score is very important. Okay. They need to know that they should talk to a mortgage professional to, um, to understand their situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's hard to just, you know, educate yourself about a mortgage if you're not speaking with somebody, anybody in the industry that knows right. what they're doing. Okay. And there's a lot of great people in this industry that uh, they should really seek out okay. their counsel. Okay. Now, as far as the... What are some other things I hear, like re reverse mortgages and what's a rehabilitated mortgage? Well, a, reha a rehab loan is uh, basically a distressed property. 
Okay. Where you're financing the fixes to the property. Yes. So let's say you're, I don't know, you're buying it for $200,000, but there's $50,000 worth of required fixes. Okay. You're going to finance that $50,000 in on top of the purchase price. Okay. It's kind of a hybrid of a construction loan, okay. but is a specific rehab loan. Okay. And then reverse mortgages. Reverse mortgages are great for people that are 62 and older to take the equity out of their house. You've seen many of the ads on TV where um, they talk about having the ability to take that equity mm -hmm. and uh, to use that as tax-free income. Of course, I'm not an accountant, so you have to talk to your accountant about that. Right. But you know that is the role of the, the, um, the reverse mortgages. Okay. Now, as far as, I guess, what should someone look at? What should somebody, if they're looking for a mortgage professional, what should what aspect of criteria should they look for in a mortgage professional? Well, like I said a minute ago, kind of you know having that professional um, approach, the ethical and educational okay. approach for people, because what you want to do is you want to understand what you're getting into when you're doing a mortgage. And anybody that's you know good in their business, that's what they're going to do. They're going to discuss with you the options that you have. Exactly. Exactly. Now, as far as the, and we're, we're actually going to talk a little bit about the personal side of Bob Bradley here in, in a few minutes as far as your community involvement for the, the local area, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in about a minute. So, since you started in 1998, have there been any, been any changes in the mortgage industry? Yes. Oh boy. There have been, <laughs> there have been many, many, many changes. All right. Um, when I first got into the business, yep. they, uh, you would basically um, put together a package and send it to a bank or an underwriter or an investor. Okay. And uh, then we introduced a couple of automated systems okay. um, in the industry, desktop underwriter and AUS systems, which are automated underwriting systems. And that eliminated a lot of the paperwork, which was terrific. Um, yeah. Yeah. Less paperwork. During that time, you also had a lot of the subprime, which you all have obviously heard about some mm -hmm. of the, the mortgage market crisis and yeah. um, some of the things that were done that weren't great for the economy right. um, caused some issues. Um, so the whole subprime market has all but disappeared, uh, which isn't a bad thing because really, if you look back on it, I was just chatting with somebody today that's in the industry and we were reminiscing about you know, having a 500 score and one day out of bankruptcy and no income, and it was it was, it was kind of a crazy time hmm. to be lending money like that. So, um, personally, I never really entertained or was too much involved in the subprime arena, but it definitely had its impact on the mortgage industry. Nice. So I, so from what I hear, other things about the new requirements coming from. The Dodd Frank Account and Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep. Well, Dodd Frank was put in place, or the, you know, the law was passed after the whole subprime issue. And um, what it was designed to do was to basically help people and help mortgage brokers qualify individuals to actually be able to repay a mortgage. And then the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau is the arm of that, which enforces that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of rules and regulations, and again, at one time there was an expression qualified mortgages and to still use qualified mortgage. Um, but there's a whole new thing with what they call TRID, which is kind of a replacement of the old RESPA and truth in lending format. Okay. And what it does, it's, it's very nice. I, you know, I think that people were a little bit nervous about it in the beginning. Mortgage people, realtors, um, banks, and, uh, and attorneys were, I think, a little bit nervous about it just because it was going to be a new format. I found it to be not that big of a deal. It is very clear as to what you're providing to the individual. You're providing a loan estimate in the beginning and a closing disclosure at the end. And those two are supposed to match within a certain tolerance. Okay. And you're providing a little bit more time for the client to review it prior to closing. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as, it sounds like the housing market has improved a bit and mortgage rate, are mortgage rates still good? Yeah, they're still phenomenal. Are they? They are. And the mortgage, uh, the um, housing market has definitely improved. All right. Um, there's a 
a lot more inventory. There's a lot more programs. I think you're seeing a lot more programs, mortgage programs coming around again. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are qualifying. I think that people in my business are um, helping people qualify, whether it be, again, helping them with their credit scores, getting them in a situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's structuring a loan with a non-occupying co-borrower. Perhaps a young person doesn't qualify on their own. Essentially a co-signer, but right. we refer to it as a non-occupying co-buyer okay. as a parent or an uncle or an aunt or something. Um, I've seen a more gifting of down payments than I ever had before. Um, so it just, yeah, the housing market is, has, I think, really picked up. Right. Now, as far as the... What, el what else drives the housing market? Consumer confidence, rates or rates in the housing market? Yeah, that's basically what drives the housing market. I mean, <laughs> all right, all right. One of the things, I mean, certainly is <laughs> rates. I mean, people see an attractive rate and it lowers their payment. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, if you consider that um, now a 30-year fix costs roughly $5 per thousand. Okay. When I first got into the business, it was about 10 or $12 per thousand. Okay. So there's a lot more buying power. And um, I think that you know, consumer confidence is another thing. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think that you need to feel good about where you're living. I think that Connecticut's coming back and making some strides and you know, getting the economy strong again. Okay. And I think you're gonna see that improving the, the, um, the housing market. But again, we gotta see a little consumer conf confidence, which is somewhat intangible. Okay. Now, as far as what should our viewers take away from our discussion? It sounds like there's still great programs and still great rates available, correct? There are, there are. I think what they should take away from the program is that um, you know, talk to a mortgage professional okay. and um, see what's out there, All see right. what you can qualify for, fix your credit if you need to fix it, talk with somebody that um, is concerned with your particular situation. Right. And yes, I mean, the, again, the housing market is terrific. You know, it's definitely back. I wouldn't, let's say not say terrific. It is coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back, back strongly. Back. Okay. And uh, I think there's a you know a lot of value out there for your money too. All right. Now, as far as that was the business side of Bob Bradley, <laughs> let's talk about the personal side of Bob Bradley for we got a, we got a few minutes left to. I don't chew, know if you can fill that much. Left up to <laughs> chew on. Now we can we can <laughs> fill something. It's, you are involved with the old Sibrick Chamber of Commerce, correct? I am. I was wondering love, if we can maybe maybe yeah. talk about the chamber and terrific chamber. I am. Uh, I've been involved in it since I moved the office. When I was in a company in Old Sibrick. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were. Now um, uh, I'm still involved with them. Okay. Good. I've Good. been on the board of directors for the last two years. It's a terrific chamber. It is. It's extraordinarily well run. Um, it is. Uh, their involvement in the community is phenomenal. It um, is. I mean, the things that they do, you know, you've seen the Arts and Crafts Festival, mm -hmm. the Chili Fest, mm -hmm. the Expo, the, the Business After Hours, terrific, really it terrific. It is. And uh, I think we're right now at about 500 or a little over 500 members. And it's, the involvement has been terrific. Uh, there's another thing in the morning, the, uh, yep. the Business Connection Hour. Mm -hmm. It's an hour long, obviously. Mark. Where you get, you hope, you hope, <laughs> where you get um, participants get two thirty-second segments, right? Kind of your elevator speech, right? And uh, it's timed, and uh, you go around to you give your quick overview of the business and/or what you're looking for, and/or thank somebody that's you know been instrumental in your business. Mm -hmm. Along with that, there are also three three-minute slots that are reserved ahead of time. Okay, and from what I understand, the 30 second slots, I believe that program is run by a very fine gentleman, shall we oh, say. Oh, very fine gentleman. And who would that very fine I mean, gentleman Mr. be? Mr. Appeloff. It does, would be Mr. Appeloff. He does Rappeloff. a great job with that. He really does. He's, he keeps it moving, he keeps it fun. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole new group of people that come in every week. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah. And wh where are they normally held? Or, is uh, it, or does it depend? Six months on, six months, out, six months at Apple Rehab, yep. and six months at Gladeview. Eight o'clock nice. in the morning, third when third Wednesday of the month. All right. So that that's call the office over there, three eight eight three two six six. There you go. If and you talk, want some more talk information to and or if you want to get um, into one of those three minute slots. Okay. Now as far there's other there's as you know as well as I do, there's other local chamber of commerces in the mm -hmm. local area. Yep. If I, if I did if I didn't know you were in, and we just met and I said to you Hey Bob, 
I'm looking at becoming a chamber member. What makes your chamber different than the chamber around the corner or chamber up the street? What would you tell me? Well, I think the two chambers that I'm involved are, uh, with are Clinton Chamber and Old Saber Chamber, and I think they're both terrific. Mm -hmm. I think they yeah. can both add just a ton of value. And that's one of the things people always ask for, you know, what's the value of the chamber? Right. I think the value of the chamber is really what you put into it is what you get out of it. You know, you, you also, there's tremendous, you know, opportunities for volunteer positions in right. the chamber. You know, we need, both of them need things for their arts and crafts or their yep. other local events. I mean, it's, it's just, I, I don't know, I think it's the energy of the chamber that you get too. And you, you, can, you, can, you can attest as well, you can attest as well as I can. The Chili Festival was a lot of fun last year. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got lucky though. <laughs> Because the weekend that's before right. yeah, was yeah, sub-zero right. and the weekend after was sub-zero. And this one, that day was 35 Yeah, it was like 37. 30, it was like 35, 36 yeah. degrees. It was absolutely wonderful. And there was a little, little bit of little white stuff on the, a little bit of white stuff on the ground, but not much. It was more <laughs> walking over the ice piles. Yes, that ran that's around. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, Bob Bradley, I want to thank you for coming down and hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Awesome. Thank you, All Peter. All right. On behalf of Bob Bradley, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.